third graders. Uh, today I have a lesson for you on uh, a little bit on pitch, but we're going to include some instruments. We're going to include reading some notes on the musical staff, as well as some rhythm patterns. So I'm going to try to hurry this up. Right now in music class, we would be learning the flutophone, which we would be learning how to read and identify pitches on the musical staff. And I'll talk a little bit more about the staff at another time. Um, but what we're going to do today is we're going to um, basically sing the song. I'll tell you how you can play the song using things at home if you don't have a pitched instrument. Now a pitch is something that creates high and low sounds. Okay, Our voices of course can create different pitch ah, ah, by high and low sounds. Pianos, um, xylophones, I have these chimes here. The bars are different sizes so they create different pitches. Whoops. Um, boom whackers in the music classroom, glockenspiel, step bells, all those things that we've talked about over the years um, can create high and low pitches. Okay. Um, we've also talked about solfege. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. So we can create pitches with our voice. That was a scale. We sang the song Do a Deer in the past, um, and all those pitches represent um, the, the notes in a scale. Those notes from scales can be organized into different rhythm patterns to create songs. So I have a song here, a little bit of an Easter song. It's a, an actually a nursery rhyme, but nursery rhymes are great for learning instruments, to play instruments on. Um, in fact, my fourth graders are learning to play this song on the recorder this week. And I'm using this song as a singing game for my younger students as well. So there's a variety of things you can do with this song. It's called Tisket a Tasket. And there's only three pitches in the whole song. And on the musical staff, we have five lines and four spaces. Uh, there's a little rap that goes along with that. I'm not going to do that today, but I'll save that for another day. But E, G, B, D, F are the lines of the treble clef. And then the spaces are represented by F-A-C-E, which spells out face. Um, just a brief little staff lesson. We have, of course, our treble clef, and we have to look at a time signature when learning to do a song. And this, again, is a little bit of review. Right now, I have the pitch G, E, and A in this song. I'm going to play those on my chimes right now. So we have G, E, A. And for solfege, that works out to be so la me. So E being me, which is the lowest note. So is our G, and la is our A, which is just above the G. Tisket a tasket, let's find the Easter basket. Look up here, look down there. You won't find it anywhere. Now I use the lyrics this time uh, in the song. You can sing the whole song in solfege if you want to. It should be a little bit tricky, but we could do it. So mi la so mi mi so so mi la so mi so so mi so so mi so so mi la so so mi. Again, just those three pitches. Uh, e, G, and A. Okay, Rhythm is very simple too. It's just quarter notes and eighth notes. Often I like to have you clap that separately before we start singing it. I just kind of skipped that today. Um, but um, I'm going to play the song right now for you on the chimes that I just showed you just so you can hear the different pitches on an instrument. Maybe some of you have a piano at home, and if you can identify those three pitches on the piano, um, and someone maybe in your house who knows to, how to identify the pitches, you can also look at YouTube videos to help you know what pitches to play. Um, but E, G, and A would be the three pitches. Now if you don't have a pitched instrument at home, I'm going to show you one way that you can create some pitches at home in a simple way. You may need a adult's help. I'm going to move this so that you can see a little bit better as to what I'm doing here. So I have some jars and these jars have water in them. 
this one here has a lot of water. We talked a little bit about this before. Just a little bit of water in here. And then this one has just a little bit more than that one in it. So the, uh, different amounts of water will create different pitches. So if you look here, you can kind of see them a little bit better. So which one do you think is going to be our lowest pitch, which is E? Let's, let's try it with hitting them with a the spoon. Which one's our lowest? The one with the most water in it. Now they're not perfect um, to create pitches, but you know we have to work with what we have at home. So if I was to play the song with those three pitches, let's see, I'm looking at mine. Does that sound about right with our song? I'm going to sing it as I play this time. Make your own instrument at home just with these uh, jars of water. Now to move on from pitch a little bit to make this a little bit more interesting, with an easier instrument for you to play um, that is a non-pitched instrument. So I'm going to move these out of the way. I'm going to show you how. Um, now this is an easy instrument you can make, a maraca. Just take an empty egg, put some rice in it or anything small. You can tape it, some spoons onto it for handles. Or you could just take an old recycled container, put some, <laughs> this has actually just crumbs in it, uh, put some rice in that to make a shaker. And my daughter Emily made this like a drum. She used a balloon to put over the top, taped it together and decorated it. You can also use it with sticks to make a drum. She also put rice inside so she can use it as a shaker drum. So it's just kind of neat. I brought some rhythm sticks home. These are non-pitched. And then of course you know these drums here that we use in music class. You can use it with your hand or you can use them with um, sticks. But any song is fun to play um, non-pitched instruments with. Okay, so our pitched instruments would be our xylophones, anything that has high and low sounds. But our non-pitched instruments um, are used to accompany the, the, sound, the song. Okay, so if I wanted to just do a simple steady beat to this song, I could do that. I'll just move it so you can see the music again. Okay, so here we have. I'm going to play a steady beat first. simple you've all done steady beat for years um, now actually what I've done up here is used pictures with some uh, different rhythm patterns we have two eighth notes here actually four eighth notes two sets of eighth notes bunny rabbit you have chick which is kind of what we just did with the steady beat uh, Easter egg or basket and then of course I have a repeat sign so I can play this pattern as I sing the song now you, we started doing this a little bit before school let out. Singing a song and playing an instrument at the same time is not as easy as it sounds. So it's going to take you a little bit of practice. What I would recommend is practice the rhythm pattern separately, separately first. Now this is just a pattern I put together. You could switch them up. You could uh, make it simple by having just bunny rabbits all the way across. I just encourage you to challenge yourself a little bit now. In third grade you can do some more complicated rhythms. So if I put together bunny rabbit chick. I would have to play this twice to fit the whole song. Bunny rabbit chick, rest, Easter egg, basket. All right, so I'm going to try singing the song as I play the rhythm pattern. And then I want you at home to work on this by singing the song and creating a rhythm pattern with a homemade instrument or whatever instruments you might have around the house um, to play along. You can get your family doing it with you. Maybe you have brothers and sisters you can teach the song to. Um, or you can even use it as a game. Like I said, it's a, 
it's a singing game, so you can hide an Easter basket around the room, maybe use some dynamics, sing loud or play your instrument louder as they get closer to the Easter basket, or play and sing quieter as they are further away from the basket. And that's the singing game that would be used with this song. All right, so I'm gonna challenge myself right now. I'm gonna read this rhythm pattern while I sing this song. Okay, I'm gonna get my one, two, ready, and tis get a task, it let's find the Easter basket. Look up here, look down there, you won't find it anywhere. So in my head, I knew the song by heart now, so I don't have to watch the pitches anymore. I was watching my rhythm pattern. And then I could change my rhythm pattern. I could, let's see, let's take the chick out. And let's put another Easter egg there. Um, and then let's see. Yeah, let's keep it like that. All right, so I'm going to practice the rhythm alone first. Bunny rabbit Easter egg. Easter egg basket. Repeat. Bunny rabbit Easter egg. Easter egg basket. And you don't have to say the words. You can just say T T T. I even recommend counting at this point. One and two and three and four. One and two, three, four. One and two and three and four. One and two, three, four. Because there are four beats in a measure, each card gets two beats, so, and each eighth note is two sounds to one beat. So you'd say one and on every eighth note. You would just count the number on the quarter note. And of course, if you have a rest, you would just, you count it, but you would have to uh, be silent on that rest. Okay, so I'm going to try this rhythm pattern as I sing the song now. Tis get a task, it let's find the Easter basket. Look up here, look down there, you won't find it anywhere. And that's it. So play the pattern twice. You can write your own pattern at home using quarter notes, eighth notes, quarter rests. Um, you can be even really challenging and put some 16th notes in there if you feel ready to do that. You can use a shaker, you can use a drum, um, and then of course, like I showed you with the water and the jars, if you want to play the pitches, or maybe you have a xylophone or a piano at home, you want to play the pitches on that instrument as well. So just experiment with this song, learn it, play it. And I would love to see videos and pictures. I know some people have been sharing them with me. I saw a student create their own drum set out of tin, different sized tin cans and, and some pencils, I think it was. Um, so there's your creativity can just really um, run with this. So I hope that you have fun with it. I hope that you'll participate in this. And I really miss you guys. And I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your week and a happy Easter. Bye-bye.